two-dimensional maxillary superimposition. This video provides the information necessary to reliably and accurately superimpose longitudinal cephalograms on natural maxillary reference structures. By the end of this short presentation, it should be clear what structures should be traced, how the superimpositions will be used, and, most important, how they should be performed. When superimposing the maxilla, its anterior posterior or AP position is determined by two sets of structures. Using small implants to superimpose upon, Bjork and Schieler showed that the most stable surface of the midface during growth is the zygomatic process. More specifically, the stable aspect of the process is located just above and anterior to key ridge. Key ridge cannot be relied upon because it models downwards and backwards over time. You also cannot rely on the region just below the orbital rim where the zygomatic process and orbital floor meet. The orbital rim and orbital floor model upwards during growth. Thus, it is only the region between the orbital rim and key ridge that should be superimposed upon. The second set of structures that help when superimposing the maxilla are the maxillo-zygomatico-temporal sulci. The sulci are two vertical or almost vertical lines located behind the lateral contour of the orbit that extend below the orbit. Actually, they start just below the cribriform plate and extend down to the nasal floor, usually to the level of the maxillary molars. Over longer periods of time, the sulci model in a posterior direction and thus are not absolutely stable. Vertically, you will need to focus on the orbital floor and the nasal floor. Orbitale, which is approximately where the lateral contours of the orbits and the orbital floor meet, normally models upwards over time. In contrast, the nasal floor models downwards with growth. As such, the distance between the orbital and nasal floors increases during growth. Based on what's been said so far, the structures that need to be traced for maxillary superimpositions are the right and left zygomatic processes, the right and left maxilla zygomatico temporal sulci, the orbital floors, and the nasal floor. These structures can all be identified on lateral cephalograms. You should start by tracing the zygomatic process and the maxilla zygomatico temporal sulci. Then trace the orbital floor and identify orbitale. Remember, these structures are bilateral, so you will have to identify both sides and trace the midline between them. Next, trace the nasal floor. Once you've completed the tracings, you can superimpose them based on the primary and secondary reference structures. The primary structure used to superimpose tracings in the AP plane is the anterior surface of the zygomatic process. If there's any doubt about your tracing, or the process cannot be easily identified, then superimpose on the maxilla zygomatico sulcus. The primary structures to determine the vertical position of the superimposition are the orbital floor, where the bony apposition occurs during growth, and the nasal floor, which resorbs. In order to determine the correct vertical position of the tracing that is being superimposed, you should slide along the anterior surface of the zygomatic process so that the orbital floor shows apposition of bone and the nasal floor shows resorption of bone. There should be slightly greater apposition than resorption. Remember, 
the distance between the orbital and nasal floors increases during growth. Ideally, approximately three-fifths of the increase is due to apposition in orbitale, and two-fifths is due to resorption of the nasal floor. Depending on the duration between cephalograms and the individual's growth potential, there is often only a small increase in the distance between the orbital and nasal floors. In such instances, simply make sure that the nasal floor resorbs bone and the orbital floor adds bone. In summary, first perform your tracings and focus on the anterior surface of the zygomatic process. Remember to use only the regions that are not changing over time. You should always check the AP position using the maxilla zygomatico sulcus. Then slide along the zygomatic process until three-fifths of the increase in the distance between the nasal and orbital floors is due to apposition on the orbital floor. Always verify to be sure that approximately two-fifths of the increase was due to resorption of the nasal floor.